Welcome to the first lecture on weather. In this lecture, we're going to discuss wind, clouds, precipitation, and then the station model. The three factors that affect wind are the pressure gradient force, or the difference in pressure. Remember, gradient is the uh, change, Coriolis effect, and the friction force. When we refer to pressure gradient, we're looking at the difference between the high and low pressure system. Now, air flows from high to low pressure, and the steeper the gradient, the stronger the wind. Coriolis effect affects wind much like the ocean currents where it travels toward the right in the northern hemisphere. This leads to anticyclonic or cyclonic flow depending on the pressure system. High pressure gets anticyclonic flow which is clockwise around the system low pressure cyclonic flow, which is counterclockwise around the system. Hurricanes and storms move counterclockwise around the low pressure system. In the Northern Hemisphere, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the opposite. This idealized map shows you where high pressure and low pressure systems generally form in the United States. It's not steadfast, but generally, you can see the general airflow. Adding to the picture, the westerly winds tend to move these systems from west to east. So a system forms and it tends to move across the country from the Pacific toward the Atlantic. We mentioned the westerlies and they are part of global airflow. The global airflow is due to the uneven heating of the earth causing convection cells. These convection cells exist in both the northern and southern hemispheres. There's two Hadley cells, one in the north and one in the south, two feral cells, one in the north, one in the south, and two polar cells. Please notice on the equator you have a belt of very low activity because the air is rising there to a low pressure system. That is called the ITZZ or the doldrums. There's very little wind and because air is rising there's a lot of condensation and rain. In between the Hadley and Farrell cells you have a high pressure belt called the subtropical high pressure belt. That subtropical high pressure belt is descending air so it's dry. Much of the world's deserts are very dry and along this belt the salinity of the ocean uh, because there's not a lot of precipitation is high so those are the saltiest areas in the open ocean because there's very little precip. You can see between the feral cells and the polar cells that is termed the jet stream and the jet stream rises and falls seasonally. So this is an idealized, dividing the Earth into three equal parts, the 0 to 30, the 30 to 60, and then the 60 to 90 in these cells. During the summer, you have a bit of a different configuration, and during the winter, a different bit of a configuration. So when you're looking at the currents, the uh, doldrums, or the intertropical convergence zone, very little wind, a lot of precipitation. The trade winds, which got their names from the sailing ships, they blow uh, in the subtropical zones. The 30 to 35 degrees, that uh, high pressure belt, that's called the horse latitudes. Uh, because of that descending air, there tends to be a little less, a little less wind. And a lot of times ships stalled out because they were wind powered. So they had to throw heavy things overboard. It got the nickname, the horse latitudes. Legend has it that because they would toss their horses overboard because they needed their cannons, although the cannons weighed more. Because of that Coriolis effect though, we do have curved paths. The westerlies 
blow across much of the United States. And then the polar easterlies is the last uh, wind belt. The westerlies and easterlies are separated by a jet stream. You can see there's your two jet streams. One is along the horse latitudes and one is along the polar front. And they are not exactly straight. They rise and fall due to uh, the season, seasonality, or whether they're over land or water. But uh, the jet streams do affect weather. They tend to isolate the tropics, subtropics, and uh, polar areas. A monsoon, although most people use it incorrectly and think it's a big rainstorm, a monsoon is a extreme seasonal pattern with only two, uh, two patterns, two seasons. Uh, so because of the jet stream, you have a cold season, winter monsoon in India with no rain and bitter colds because the air's pushing from the Himalayas. And then the summer monsoon, intensely hot with extreme rainfall uh, because the jet stream has risen above India and all that air is being sucked off the warm Indian Ocean. So a monsoon means two great extremes and India is the uh, typical example used. Sea breezes, what we get, remember water has a higher specific heat, it heats up and cools down slowly. So during the day, the land heats up and air rises, sucking the moist air off of, in our case, the Gulf. And then by the time the afternoon comes, that air has condensed in the upper atmosphere and we have our afternoon thunderstorms. So every Floridian knows that every afternoon around these parts, we have thunderstorms somewhere in the area and that all occurs because of this process. In the evening, the opposite is true. The land cools off quicker. The air rises over the Gulf or the sea, but in our case, the Gulf, and uh, you get clouds offshore. We mentioned orographic or the mountain effect, and this is how it works. Your prevailing wind moves up as it tries to pass over a mountain. While it's moving up, that's low pressure, you have rain or snow. As it moves over the mountain, it starts to sink and the air, moistureless at this point, warms up slightly and it's very dry. So you have two distinct climates on one side of the mountain or the other. Mountain and valley breezes occur much the same way where low-lying uh, areas cause the upslope of air, and then in the evening, the downslope. Chinooks are strong winds that come off of the mountains and they're very dry. So it's part of the whole rain shadow effect. Uh, we have a lot of these and the Santa Ana winds uh, are another uh, warm, dry wind and that causes a lot of the wildfires that you hear about in California. And speaking of the Santa Ana winds, uh, that is the winds that come off of the uh, LA basin and that high pressure ridge out that, that forms in the desert. And uh, every year, very warm, dry winds are associated with these wildfires. We've all heard of El Nino meaning the child or the Southern Oscillation. And that occurs, if you look at the uh, slides below, you can see under normal conditions, you have typical ocean circulation with the cold water moving up the coast of South America. And that area has upwelling because of the trade winds and cool water, nutrient rich, very productive ecosystem. But that comes at a price because eventually the water sloshes backwards, much like in a bathtub or anything. When you push too much water in one direction, it bounces back. And when it bounces back, that current slackens, the trade wind slackens. And you can see in the El Nino conditions, you have warmer water off the coast of South America, 
which is less productive, does not allow for that upwelling, and climate is greatly affected. The villages there that depend on fishing uh, often uh, go hungry during this season because it changes the nutrient levels in the water. Uh, you get a lot of rain over the Pacific Ocean because that water doesn't make it all the way to Asia. So you have drought conditions in Asia, drought conditions in Australia. So El Nino and La Nina, the Southern Oscillation, the moving back and forth of the uh, warming cold water mass off the coast of South America affects the entire world's climate. Now clouds form when air rises and condensation occurs. The upper atmosphere is cooler, so as the warm air rises, it reaches its dew point and then clouds form. Now, every cloud is made of millions and millions of uh, droplets of water. These droplets form around a condensation nuclei, so every single droplet of water has a solid that it condenses on because they need condensation nuclei, be it dust from volcanoes or soot from cities or whatever, uh, condensation nuclei, these droplets continue to form and form, and eventually they get large enough to fall to Earth. Clouds can weigh millions of pounds, but their density is very low. So around cities, you tend to get haze. Haze would be condensation occurring at a little less relative humidity due to all of the condensation nuclei in the um, atmosphere. Now, fog is when a cloud forms on the ground. So it's a, it's a cloud. Some of it is radiation forming at night. Advection fog is a cool wind blowing off of uh, the west coast over that cool California current. And then when it hits land, it warms up. Upslope fog is in association with the orographic effect. And steam fog is when water is cooled over a lake or a pond and then in the morning, condensation occurs over it. This image shows you the different types of fogs. So when you look at the different type of clouds, you have to look at both the height and the shape. Stratus means layered. Cumulus are fluffy cotton balls. Cirrus are thin and wispy. And then all three of those clouds form high in the atmosphere where there are ice crystals, in the middle where there would be a mixture of ice and water droplets, and then very low where they would be water droplets. So there's cirrus clouds. Those are high level cirrus clouds. Their nicknames are mare's tails. They tend to warn you of an approaching front. And in our next uh, lecture, Meteorology number two, we will be talking about fronts, but these cirrus clouds uh, are an indicator of a change in weather. They're wispy and uh, they kind of look like the Nike swooshes to me, but they are called mare's tails. A cirrostratus cloud or a thin layer of cloud high in the atmosphere, they tend not to be seen, but the sky is not brilliant blue because of the haze. And you can also see a ring around the sun. They also are indicators of a low pressure system approaching. The high level fluffy white clouds are called macro skies or high level cirrus clouds. Middle or middle uh, cumulus clouds, and I misspoke, it's cumulus clouds uh, before, but middle ones uh, tend to uh, be covering the sky, like in this, like a marsh, uh, mellow, puffy, wave-like appearance, alto cumulus. Alto stratus clouds, you can see the sun, but not make it out. They're uh, opaque, but you can kind of see through them, uh, like in this image. Uh, the sky tends to not be blue. And the low stratiform clouds tend to uh, cover 
the entire, they're layered, stratus is clouds, layer, low clouds. Nimbo stratus, when the entire sky is gray, uh, low cumulus clouds are the pretty fluffy white cotton balls that we stare at and pretend they're shapes. And when you see a thunderstorm approaching, it's usually a cumulus cloud being pushed up to the upper atmosphere. You can see it lower and then rising, and these stack, uh, stack up. You can see it's rising again. They stack up and then form thunderstorms. That's how the thunderstorm, uh, when it hits the upper atmosphere, that's a thundercloud coming from a cumulus cloud being pushed up called cumulonimbus. This summarizes the clouds. Please note the alto cumulus clouds. I did misspeak and say alto cirrus uh, when we were on that slide, but corrected myself. And I just want to point out to you that the alto cumulus, but this sums up your cloud types. This is a good uh, image to help you identify clouds, especially if uh, you're working on a project to uh, show different types of clouds. Now, rain forms from collision and coalescence of the tiny droplets, and then they fall to Earth. So rain and drizzle are common types of precipitation. You can also have freezing rain as it falls through the atmosphere, it freezes. If there's a colder layer of the atmosphere than where it forms. And then hail is formed as the raindrop falls. It gets pushed back up by rising air and freezes and falls and gets pushed back up by rising air. And it tends to grow into a ball of hail. They're associated with strong thunderstorms because of that updraft. Sleet, another type of rain that freezes. And then snow itself uh, is another type of precipitation. The last thing that we look at today, the station model, and that's how meteorologists transfer uh, transfer information in symbolic fashion. As part of your reference tables, you have a simplified station model. You can see the first thing is the wind direction and wind speed. The little fletching is where the wind is coming from. And then the flags on it indicate speed where a long tail is 10 and a shorter one is uh, five, so you can symbolically indicate the wind speed. The barometric pressure is given in a uh, shorthand method. Shorthand method. They would give you the one three eight, the last three numbers, and you put a decimal point. So you'd have one three point eight, and then add a nine or a ten, whichever gets you closer to a thousand. Remember, standard pressure uh, is 1013 and change, so you would want to be close to 1,000. You wouldn't, if you put a uh, 1013, that's uh, closer to 1,000. The tendency of rising and falling below that is sometimes given, not all the time. Not all these are given, but um, remember, rising pressure or dropping pressure would indicate the coming of a high pressure system or a low pressure system. And that's really what affects weather. The high pressure system brings clear air. The low pressure system brings storms. The temperature moving to the left, given in degrees Fahrenheit, the present weather given symbolically, and then the dew point. So here is your wind speed and direction, what the fletchings mean, and symbols for the precipitation, the dots and commas where we showed you. The sky cover or the amount of shading in your station model is on the left. 
and sometimes they give you cloud cover and if they do there is the key to cloud cover on the right now as I mentioned the trickiest the only tricky part is the station model when you come to the barometric pressure in this case 027 put a decimal so 02.7 and then add a 9 or a 10 whichever number is closer to 1000 is your answer so 902.7 or 1002.7 and 1002.7 is closer to 1000 so you would say the barometric pressure here is 1002.7.